Okay, we're going to take our understanding of reaction kinetics one step further and be able to define what half-life is and do calculations with half-life equations or formulas for each of the reaction orders. So half-life is defined as the amount of time it takes for the reactant concentration or amount to decrease by half of its original amount or its initial value. So if it's concentration, then the concentration would decrease by half. If it's mass, then the amount of reactant you have in grams would decrease by half. Um, the units for half-life are going to be some sort of time unit, and it would be specific to whatever reaction you are analyzing. It's like a lot of reactions are pretty quick, and you might measure them in seconds. Some may take even longer into hours or possibly years um, for those half-lives. The mathematical expression or the formulas that we're using for the half-life of each reaction depends on the overall order of the reaction. So we're going to break this down and go over each um, reaction order and what half-life equation you will use with each of those. Okay, so for first order reactions, once you pause the video and go ahead and write the integrated rate law for a first order reaction. Okay, so now we have that completed. Um, we're going to define what half-life is for this reaction order. So by definition, after one half-life, the time has been cut in half. So we often um, write half-life, what half-life is, as T one half, where the time has, um, it's the amount of time where half of the um, initial amount has decreased. And the concentration at that time is one half of what it was initially. So we're going to substitute, um, this should say, a, a at that time. Um, and this should be zero right here. So we're, what we're going to do is substitute AT. So since the concentration of A at that half time is equal to one half of what the concentration was initially. So instead of putting that A to A with at that second time, we're going to plug in one half A at the initial amount. Okay, so we're just substituting that value in. So we get the um, natural log of A of the concentration of A initially at time zero divided by one half the concentration of A at time zero because half of the concentration has decreased after one half life. And the time then we would put T one half so that we know that that is um, referring to the half life. Now, the next thing we'll do is rearrange the equation to solve for the half-life. Okay, So we're going to um, look at this equation up here, and we can see that these will cancel okay? because you're dividing A at time 0 by A at time 0. So you are left with um, L, the natural log of 1 over one half, okay, which really is the natural log of two, which is equal to k times t one half. Now to solve for the half half life, we're going to divide by k and divide by k so that those cancel. So the half life is actually the natural log of two. If you type that into your calculator, you can pause the video to do that. And you should get the natural log of 2 is equal to 0 0.0693 divided by k. So this is the formula that you can put on your purple sheet that gives you the half life of a first order reaction. And you can label it with first order. Okay, So this is the half-life formula
for a first order reaction. Now, you'll notice in this formula that concentration is not a part of it. So the half-life is totally dependent upon what the value of K is, what that rate constant is. Now, if we look at a graph of the concentration versus time, and if we measure the, you know, going from 0.2 molar down to 0.1, and then 0.1 to 0.5, and 0.5 to 0.2, 0.25, you'll notice that the half-life is actually constant because the rate, um, because K is also constant. So um, this is an instance in a first order reaction where the length of a half-life is constant and it is not dependent upon the initial molarity. So no matter how much you start with, the half-life is going to be the same. Okay? So that means that if you, if a, if you increase the rate constant, then the half-life will actually decrease. So reactions that have high rate constants will have half-lives that are shorter. A small rate constant will result in a longer or a bigger half-life. So the relationship between half-life and the rate constant for a first-order reaction is inverse. So I think a large K is going to give you a um, short half-life because those two variables are have an inverse relationship. Okay, so let's scroll down here to see what second what we can do with second order reactions to find their half-life formula. So let's write the integrated rate law for a second order reaction. So you can pause the video and write that just in the space right here. Okay, so I have my integrated rate law for a second order reaction. And you'll notice that unlike a first order reaction, the half-life of a second order reaction is dependent upon the reaction concentration. Because you'll look, if you look here, the half-life is actually over on this graph going from 0.2 down to 0.1. Here's the half-life. So if I go from 0.1 to 0.5, now the half-life is actually, actually increased. From 0.5 down to 0.25, the half-life is actually increasing. So the length of the half-life increases with decreasing concentration. So it is dependent upon the initial concentration. If you want to go ahead and write the formula right here on your purple sheet for a first order reaction, purple sheet, this is for a second order reaction. So this is your half-life formula for a second order reaction. The relationship between half-life and initial reactant concentration, so as that initial concentration goes down, we have an increase in the half-life. So it's taking longer for um, the react the for that amount for half of the initial amount to be used up. So this is an in, another inverse relationship, but this is between half-life and initial reactant concentration. Okay. So if the concentration of A at time zero is big, then that means a shorter half-life. A small initial concentration is going to end up in a longer half-life. Okay, so therefore each successive half-life is doubling. The preceding one and that is because the concentration of A as the reaction proceeds is having during each half-life. Remember it's the amount this concentration is going to be cut in half during each half-life. So if the concentration goes down by half then the half-life doubles every half-life. Okay? 
So the, the length of that half-life is increasing as the concentration of the reactants is decreasing as the reaction proceeds. Okay. So let's go ahead over to one more. We have zero order reactions. I'm going to pause the video and write the integrated rate law for a zero order reaction. Okay, so let's take a look at what's happening as a reaction proceeds for a zero order reaction. So when the, um, the initial amount drops by half, if we take that time, that is the half life. So the time it takes to go from 0.2 down to 0.1 molar, you know, that um, takes nearly, what, 30, not 30, about 35 seconds, roughly. And then to do that second half-life, so to go from 0.1 down to 0.05, that second half-life is cut in half. Go from here down to here, it's cut in half again. So half-life decreases with decreasing concentration. Okay. So this is going to be the relationship between half-life and initial concentration is a direct relationship. A zero as a zero order, whoops, left out order here, reaction proceeds, the half-life is decreasing. We actually saw this in our candle um, lab that we did. So this is the formula for the half-life of a zero order reaction. You'll want to pause the video and write this on your purple sheet. Okay. You can um, write all three half-life equations and label them with each um, reaction order. Okay, And then you have some practice to do down here using those half-life equations. Okay, So for example, this first one, um, we have the decomposition of hydrogen iodide into hydrogen iodine. It tells us it is a second-order reaction gives us the rate constant. We want to know how long does it take, so we want time, how long does it take for an initial to go from 0 0.05 to decrease to half. So that tells me that I am actually looking for the time of the half-life. It is a second order reaction. So T one half, the half-life, is equal to one over the concentration of A at time zero times K. So you can plug in um, K, you can plug in the initial concentration and solve for the time. Okay. For this first one, you should get 250 seconds. And I know that the time is in seconds because of the time on the rate constant. Okay. You can try this one and see if you get 250 seconds on that one. And you have a handful of um, a few other problems to try using the um, half lives and be careful. Not every problem is necessarily what well, you necessarily need the half life formula. So read the questions carefully. Please let me know if you have any questions along the way.